Hi Krishna, my name is Vimati Dasi. I'm from Germany. Um, I was born from a German father and an Italian mother. And uh, we were many kids, uh, 10 to be exact. And uh, my, I was number seven and my twin brother, Ernst August, he was number six. So, um, my father was always very busy uh, because he was a doctor, a medical doctor. And uh, my mother, she stayed home and she take, took care of us uh, like that. So, when my twin brother and I, when we, uh, when we, when our, I think it was, 13th or 14th birthday, uh, my brother came home and he brought a small record album and he said, uh, you got to listen to this. I think you like side A and I like side B because it's more upbeat. So this record album was uh, the Brahma Samhita prayers by Jamuna and uh, that we hear every morning Govindam Adipurusham Tamaham Vajam so uh, doing, in all, all of his con we will listen to this to his prayers sung by Jamuna Devi this was in uh, I believe it was about 70 or 71 okay so um, this was in Hamburg, Germany, and uh, I was an animal lover. I, I, actually, I, my dream was to become a veterinary doctor. And uh, so the first thing, even before listening to the album, uh, it just there was a picture, and he said, "This is God." My brother told me that this is God. And okay, there was this person, God, and he told me this is Krishna or Govinda. Uh, he was holding a puja plate and uh, he was doing puja to a cow. So uh, right away, if this is God, I love him. So I was raised Catholic and uh, I was not very satisfied with the uh, with that religion that my mother being from Italy so we we went to church every Saturday and Bible school and you know the whole thing so I was very disappointed actually by the um, by this religion because uh, the priest was telling uh, you have to become good person and you have to uh, give up smoking, this, and he was, would tell this in the class, and, uh, in the mass. And so after the mass, he'd come out and he'd say, uh, he would socialize with the people and, and he would light up a big cigar, you know. And I said, wait a minute, this is not right. He just told us not to smoke. And, you know, he's, as a little kid, you know, I used to go, I loved to go to church because I loved the idea that there was God and, you know, this is just, I was raised like that. So, um, so here uh, is my twin brother giving me this record album. So we had a little record player that ran on batteries. So I put the album, I put it in the single, put it in Govindam Adi Purusham. It was so beautiful. And when the record was over, it would pop out. And again, I pop it back in, and again it will play. 
<laughs> so because we were uh, five girls and five boys, so the, in the girls' room, I was sleeping on the top, so I wrote the lyrics of the song. I wrote it to the ceiling, and I knew the whole song by heart. Before I met the devotees, before I met Prabhupada, before I even went to the temple. So my, mm, my brother brought me one morning, he said, let's go. Let's go and uh, sneak out. <laughs> and because we have to experience the Mongol Arti. So we went and uh, we went for the Mongol Arti. Across the city, it was very far from, because we lived in the suburbs of Hamburg and we had to take a train and sub subway and all these things to get there. So I met the devotees and they taught me how to chant and uh, I saw the deities and that was it. <laughs> and I just started coming and I started doing some service to the devotees. Um, I was making uh, bead bags. <laughs> I was sewing bead bags and I was making knitting hats for the devotees and I would bring, uh, because my um, my father, he, my um, actually my mother, she didn't like Germany so much. It, she said there's too many hippies and there's too many uh, Hare Krishna people and too many rockers. So, uh, so she took half of the children to Italy, and I was re I remained in Germany with my father and my younger brother. So I would get up early in the morning uh, and chant on my beads and taught my little brother how to chant. And this is, I was, I'm only 14 years old. I was still going to school. And uh, so I, and my father had me, he gave me some money to manage the household, to cook for him and my brother and myself like this. So then um, I would, budget the money in such a way that there was always some money left so I can buy some flowers for the deities, for the temple. And I was going to school and after school I would go to the temple and again I would come home, cook something and go back to the temple like this. And uh, so slowly, slowly I just, you know, um, just joined. And, I actually stopped my studies, which is maybe not so. Now I'm thinking maybe I should have just uh, continued the studies of becoming a veterinary doctor. And, uh, but at the time that was not important to me. Important to me was to pursue this um, teaching of um, that Shira Prabhupada had brought to Hamburg. Germany to my town. Oh, it's a big city actually, Hamburg. So um, this is, you know, my coming to Krishna consciousness. And so I, I changed schools uh, because my father said you have to, uh, you have to pursue some, uh, you have to at least learn a trade or you learn something. You cannot just, you know, join. <laughs> this is not good. He was he was not against, but he was also not for just giving everything up. So my mother was a little bit different story, but but uh, this is my um, uh, this is how I became a devotee. My, my brother, he still wanted to continue in his material life, but uh, as a small child, a young girl, I gave up everything for Srila Prabhupada. I, I don't know if I would have uh, continued this school because it was uh, a lot of my, uh, those days were a lot, uh, there was a lot of influence from America into German youth, you know, with the music and with these similar things. But because, um, I just, I was a shy person from the beginning. So um, if you ask me how it changed my life, uh, 
I would say that uh, it was it, my life became some some purpose was there because uh, like my other brothers and sisters, they started getting a little bit into the hippie thing and <clears throat> maybe some. Uh, drug abuse and this and that, you know, I mean, they ended up studying something, but um, it didn't mean anything at the time to me anymore. So this is how it changed my life. And uh, I just wanted to do something for the temple, for the deities and for Shri Prabhupada. And, oh, and <laughs> actually, because my father wanted everybody to become a doctor and I wanted to get into veterinary field, so I was enrolled in a school where their second language after German was Latin. Latin and then the next language was Old Greek because this was requirement to be able to go to the university and, and study medicine was this prior you had to learn Latin and not English. So. So when I changed schools, because I wanted to finish school quickly and not pursue a university, so then, uh, then I had to learn English and I was really bad at it. So my, uh, at the temple, oh, no, my father, he had given me a tape recorder as a gift uh, and I asked him for it and he gave it and he said, so what are you gonna listen? And I got all of the Prabhupada tapes, uh, cassette tapes, and so I played and learned from Srila Prabhupada how to speak English by ear. <laughs> Since I've been in India, I live in India now for 21 years, and people ask me, what is your qualification? And at first I didn't understand what, is, what do they mean by qualification, but they mean by, you know, what is your degree, what is your, you know, accomplishment in life. Um, so I, uh, I would say it would, would, have, would have probably be okay if I would have pursued uh, more higher studies and become a veterinary doctor because I could use it now a little bit better. However, if you know my life, uh, then uh, I continue to, to Krishna gave me the service. I do animal care. I take care of cows. I take care of elephants and like this. So, and um, if somebody wants to learn from this, said it would probably probably be better to continue your study. But then again, my time was a little bit different because at that time, he's going needed to be. Ex ex it needed to expand. There was not a single uh, lady devotee in the town where I came from. So I, um, so it was necessary. I jumped. <laughs> uh, there was no other people, uh, no other ladies in Hamburg. I actually, I had to uh, move to Heidelberg in order to, you know, become a full-time devotee. Uh, even though I was, you know, visiting every day, but I wanted to learn more and more and more. Uh, from that point, because my time was different, uh, uh, the time was different, so it's according to time, place and circumstances. You know, now I come to Juhu, and it's, you know, and they just built such a wonderful place, and it is like an oasis to, co to go to, to uh, you know, to to learn about Krishna, to to do service to Krishna like this, and in Hamburg, Germany, those days, the temp the first temple I went to was you know across from a slaughterhouse in a small apartment above a factory, you know, and there was clothes line everywhere, but there was deities. Srila Prabhupada installed them. Uh, he had come actually to my city and you know like that. So so in that way I cannot really, you know, say because it depends on, on, on the circumstances what you know uh, what would be best 
you know, if you come to Krishna consciousness, you always have to see how you can serve. If it, like, if you're a doctor, if you want, if you're a veterinary doctor, finish the studies, you know, and go ahead and, and serve like that, if that is what you want to do. And, but in my case, it was a different, it was a different circumstance. Anyways, now I'm doing the same thing that a veterinary doctor is doing. <laughs>